Hello Otters, Miss Bennett here welcoming you to your Friday learning. I hope you're all well and yes, happy Friday. Uh, let's get into your learning then. So you've got a wake and shake of the times table mashup. So it includes a whole lot of times tables there and it's a little bit of a longer one. It's a good one for the end of the week to kind of refresh and recap all that times table knowledge. Then year fours, you've got a lesson on starting to divide two digit number by a one digit number. And then the year fives, you're continuing with multiplying a four digit number by a two digit number. Again, for both year fours and year fives, please make sure you watch the White Rose video. Please pause at points where you need to. Please feel free to rewatch or go back over any of the points in the video that you um, wanted to just check again and make sure it's clear in your head before you go on and answer the questions. Inspired actually by one of the questions on the year four worksheet, if you want to grab a spare piece of paper or just watch me do it and go through it with me, I've got a little two digit division here to go through. So I've got the question here, 72 divided by three, and they've used a part whole model, which I thought was really good, a really fantastic way of looking at this. And what they did in one of the questions, this isn't one of the questions in the worksheet, I've um, created a new um, two digit number, is they partitioned the number into multiples of what you are dividing by. So we've got the number 72, which is quite a large number, but we can partition, can't we, into 60 and 12 because both of those parts together add up to make 72. Now, 12, hopefully you know from your three times table, you know how many times three makes 12? Four, brilliant. Um, so therefore you know for certain that 12 is a multiple of the three times table. Looking at 60 though, you might go, oh, that's that's not in, a tw did I say 12 times table? Three times table, gosh, sorry, do apologize. So you know that 12 is a multiple of three. Right, rewind Miss Bennett. Looking at 60 then, you might think, well, Miss Bennett, that is much further than, you know, the three times table, okay, because 12 times three is 36, you know, but remember that multiples, when we watch that BBC Bite Size video, are expanded times table, so they can continue onwards. So how do I know that 60 is a multiple of three? Well, 30 is a multiple of three. Yeah, how many lots of threes go into 30? Hopefully you should say 10. 10 times three equals 30. Therefore, if we double both of those, answer being 60, what times three is going to make 60? 20, exactly. Okay, this knowledge here is actually gonna help us over here as well. So once you've partitioned it, you can then work out each part divided by three. So 60 divided by three, if I bring you back down, sorry, I'm just getting the lids off my pens again. If I bring you back down to over here again, 20, 10 times three is 30. So therefore doubling that, 20 times three is going to be 60. So how many lots of threes going to 60? Well, it is 20. So 60 divided by three is 20. And then this one here, hopefully you should be able to um, answer using your three times table knowledge. Okay, so you've got three, six, nine, 12. How many lots of three uh, are there in 12? Hopefully you're saying four. So 12 divided by three, is four. Now, do we think this is the final answer? Have we got what 72 divided by three is? Yeah, have we got that final answer? What do you think you need to do here? What you need to do, and hopefully you thought, is add these two answers together. So you add together the 20 and the four. So 72 divided by three is 24. So yes, this is how you can use partitioning and part whole model to help you work out a division and dividing by two digit numbers. And I just thought I'd share that with you. I'll leave it up there for a second so you can see nice and clearly.
Right, brilliant. I hope that helps. Now, going on to your extras, you've got a, additional arithmetic um, questions in there if you wish to do those, and also your reasoning and problem solving uh, questions. Remembering to, you know, not uh, push it too much, I would recommend only one uh, question or slide per day because they are more investi investigative questions which require more time. Right, spellings, you're continuing with your unit 12 spellings. And if you can today, please choose one of the activities from the creative spelling menu to practice your spellings. That would be excellent, please. Just a different approach and way of practicing your questions. Like questions your spellings. Right. <laughs> Handwriting. Um, continuing, you will have um, some different words focusing on the letter G. It'll be kind of like a wrapping up of the letter G for your handwriting today. Grammar. Uh, it's your final session on using brackets today. I've included back in the super movies just in case you wish to repeat that again. Um, and then you have got some questions and activities to do based on using brackets. And there's also an optional little quiz if you want to do that as well, just as a, like a little self checking um, your understanding of using brackets. Then writing, right? So today with your writing, you're going to be using and learning about relative clauses and relative pronouns, okay? And you're going to write some sentences linked to the wild robot using relative pronouns and clauses. Uh, this will be kind of like our last kind of skills focus with our writing because next week we're going to be looking at um, planning, drafting and writing um, a piece of writing uh, based on um, the wild robot. Okay, so I hope you look forward to that. So back to today though, um, you have got a BBC Bite Size video to watch to learn all about relative clauses and why we use them in our writing. And then um, you have got a, um, I would just bring it up, sorry. Uh, you have got a little uh, PowerPoint uh, for you to watch, which tells you in detail and in further detail than the BBC Bite Size video, um, all about relative clauses and pronouns. Um, there is, uh, what I've done for this is I've also included a video version of the PowerPoint if the PowerPoint slide isn't working correctly. I was trialing that today and then if that doesn't work, let me know in the class, Otter class blog because I can quickly um, have a look, or oh, as quickly as I can, look at converting it into a PDF version if the video version um, isn't necessarily working. But um, why I chose the video version is because it goes through the different points of the PowerPoint and shows it to you as though you were going through the PowerPoint, which sometimes the PDF version doesn't always do. So have a look at that. Then I've also got for you another um, activity underneath, which includes some mini uh, tasks, uh, which I'd like you to have a go at for understanding relative clauses and pronouns. And then finally, can you create some sentences linked to what we know already or details that we have found out from reading the wild robot already using relative pronouns? So I'm looking for at least four to five sentences where relative pronouns have been used in your sentence and hopefully therefore creating a relative clause in your sentences. Um, I would, I've put there as a bullet point for certain, I'd like to see the relative pronoun. I'll give you a bit of a clue here as to what to expect when you learn about them, who and which being used, please. Um, but however, I would like you to try and use a few of the other relative pronouns as well in your sentences. What I've also included are some examples underneath, which you can have a look at, look at. And then I've also put in a little relative pronoun help poster um, if you need any further support with that at all. Then there's also me reading chapter seven and eight of the wild robot and I'm asking you some questions and asking for your thoughts as I'm reading that in the video. So I hope you enjoy that. Finally, if you do want anything further on relative clauses, um, there is a super movers attached at the end, uh, a little active activity, which might be quite good after all of that uh, English writing and grammar focus. OK, so that would be lovely to do. Then, as you know, with your afternoon activities, please carry out some quiet reading. So important getting in regular reading, you know, absolutely, um, you know, 
would love to see that, please. And remember, you can always record the, that in your spring reading journal. Again, hopefully you started um, an activity or a learning um, based task from the topic learning grid for the Spirit of Japan. There, I hope you're really enjoying those or the activities. There's a nice uh, variety of those. So continue with that today, please. Like I said before, these aren't activities to rush through. These are activities to take a bit more time with and um, to do have fun with that today and continue with those. I've also included in just as a little additional extra um i know some of you watched these already but i found an episode of operation ouch um where they go through the digestive system and i know you had some work set in there for the beginning of the week so i thought it'd be nice to have um a link in with that uh, so yes it's operation ouch where they tell you all about the digestive system so that's your Friday learning. Um, most importantly, also, I hope you have a lovely weekend 